emerging countries with dizzying rates of growth, looking at opportunities around the world. But we're going to come back in this conversation to one of the core challenges for many of these countries, which is developing a national identity and a national purpose. Arturo Valenzuela is senior advisor for Latin America, Covington and Burlington, and former assistant secretary of state for Western Hemisphere Affairs with the United States government. Thanks, thanks very much for your time. I mean, it sounds a shade philosophical, but I think that's really the core issue that we're going to touch upon. Uh, even in a country like India, if you ask, is there a stronger national identity or are there many sort of other identities within this larger uh, context of India? Uh, it's a challenge. Why do you think it's a pressing one? It's a pressing challenge because across the world, not only in India, do you see this phenomena of subalternate loyalties. That is, loyalties either to a region or to a tribe or to a linguistic group or to a religious uh, identity. And religion winds up becoming some of, one of the most difficult of the divisions uh, in the modern world. We've seen that. Uh, curiously, it's more important than class or economic differences. Uh, it's a very profound difference. And unless these differences can be overcome and the subalternate loyalties are translated into a national loyalty where you look at the national community as being the legitimate community, then it's much more difficult then to move forward and you, and you have the danger uh, of, uh, of sectarian uh, or, or even uh, um, independence movements emerging within a society as, as different loyalties seek to cr create their own states. That's the danger. You know, uh, in the conversation that you've had here at the Growth Net, one is the, you know, step-by-step uh, -step approach to really consolidating the national identity. I suppose it starts with discussion and dialogue. I think the key, and this certainly came out in the session here at the Growth Net, uh, was that there has to be a communication in the society among leaders and followers. It can't just also be that leaders are telling followers what they need to do. Uh, there has to be a genuine exchange. There has to be a consultation. There has to be an effort to develop a sense of common purpose. Uh, even if there are differences, common purpose needs to somehow come into the, to the picture where you can agree to disagree peacefully, but at the same time, maybe to come up with solutions even if you have differences. It's compromise. It's called compromise. And Compromise leads to consensus. Consensus leads then to being able to project a national objective or goal, and that's what we were looking for. You follow Latin America very closely. How closely do you follow India? And specifically in the Indian context, the national identity challenges that India faces, uh, what sort of prescription would you offer? Well, I don't follow India that uh, closely, and I've worked all of my life on Latin American issues, both as a scholar as well as a, a policymaker uh, working with the United States government. Uh, but uh, uh, certainly India is a fascinating case of a, of a country that, that emerges out of colonial rule um, and, and has a common narrative, in a sense, in that struggle towards uh, independence. Um, and still faces the significant challenge of trying to see how uh, it can come together uh, as a nation with a common purpose. An important ingredient in that, and we discussed this as well in our sessions, is that there has to be a responsiveness on the part of the institutions of the society. And in other words, people have to see a benefit coming. And one of the most important ones, of course, is to overcome deep levels of inequality within societies. Uh, they're not the, it's not the only answer. If there are significant, for, for example, religious differences that are very, very profound, uh, that, that can be problematic in coming together to build a, a national consensus. And this is why a commitment to a certain degree of tolerance, uh, you know, no, known as secularism in certain contexts, is probably the way to go because you, know, you can't have your views being imposed on others that believe very strongly about other things, and you have to find ways to work together. Well, we'll leave it at that. Thank you very much for your time. You're very welcome.